Hey, what's going on guys? My name is CarQ and today I've got a bunch of tips pertaining to each of Kiriko's abilities, so let's get started. Beginning with healing Ofuda, her primary fire. This has 5 ammo, with each ammo firing 2 paper talismans that heal for 13 HP each or 26 HP per ammo. These papers will seek and follow your teammates as long as your crosshairs are roughly around them. Yellow means it's seeking, and blue means it's not seeking. But they are still active healing projectiles no matter what, so teammates can still walk into the blue papers to get healed. Tip number one is that the L shift indicator is for her swift step, but it serves as a dual purpose for your healing Ofuda. As long as you track your teammates movement while firing the papers and maintain this indicator, you can't miss. This indicator reference tip only works on the default swift step sensitivity of 50. If you put it any higher, let's say 100 for example, it will not be an accurate representation of whether the Ofuda will seek or not. So at the end of the day, accurate aim and tracking will be the core skill. If you put the sensitivity below 50, it could work, but I don't recommend it as it just makes using your actual swift step much more difficult. Healing Ofuda's max range is also the same as Swift Step, which is 35 meters, so if you don't see the indicator, the papers will be blue and won't follow a teammate, but once you're back in range, you're good. As a side note, the papers do chase for quite a long time. I'm going to assume about 50 meters if I had to guess, maybe even more. Hard to get an exact number, but Triple Tracer Blink was more than enough. Tip number two is to generally try to heal one teammate at a time. Oftentimes you have a clump of teammates with low HP and you may be tempted to wiggle your crosshairs and fan your heals across them. While this can work, you may run the risk of missing some healing papers. You would need to have a relatively high sensitivity to snap your crosshair between targets if you want to multi-heal teammates in one healing cycle. If you fan your heals across them too slowly, look carefully in slow motion here, a few papers missed in between. A high sensitivity can solve this like so, but it's still not guaranteed every time, reinforcing the tip I mentioned where you want to generally heal one teammate at a time in most cases. By default, you will automatically fire all five papers by pressing the ability once. Tip number three is to let you know that you can change this setting by going to options, Controls, Change Hero, Kiriko, Toggle Healing Ofuda to Off. Now you'll only fire the papers as long as you're holding the button. So if you let go prematurely, you'll only fire two or three papers. I personally play with this setting off because I like having control of how long I want to hold the papers out so I can quickly perform other actions like throwing my kunai without being locked into the five paper animation. Let's move on to Kunai, her main method of dealing damage. Kunai's deal 40 damage to the body, 120 to the head, and have no fall off damage at long ranges. Tip number one is to keep your crosshairs at head level because of that 3x damage value, and because of the slow travel time, you don't necessarily even have to aim at the enemy, but rather where you think they might be strafing or moving towards. Tip number two is to utilize really tight and cheeky angles. Since the kunais also fire in a straight line and defy the laws of gravity, treat it like a Zenyatta secondary fire and kind of spam them around corners and tight chokes. Tip number three is that you can animation cancel a kunai with melee instantaneously, allowing you to deal 150 damage really quickly, 120 damage to the head, and 30 for the melee. This can be handy to one-shot pesky heroes like Tracer who flank and get up close to you. And now on to Protection Suzu, and Protection Suzu is not an immortality field, as it behaves very differently. It's an invulnerability, and coded to where you're essentially invisible and untargetable whilst cleaning all the negative effects. Tip number one is to use this ability to negate literally anything. Wake up sleeping targets, negate the earth shatter damage and stun, negate the EMP damage. The untargetable trait makes it so Reinhardt's will literally phase through people when charging. You can see Echo can't even duplicate while they're under this effect. However, this leads into tip number two, and that is to use it wisely and be careful of being baited. It's a 15 second cooldown with only a 1 second invulnerability duration, so don't fall for the fake Sombra translocating, anticipating the EMP as an example. On a more obscure note, this ability also has a slight knockback effect, so tip number 3 is to use it offensively if it makes sense to boop enemies off the map like this. 
Swift Step is Kiriko's teleport ability with a maximum range of 35 meters. Turns out, it also has invulnerability frames or iframes, so tip number one is that you can use it to dodge enemy abilities if you don't have an ally that's safely out of line of sight to teleport to or if you don't have Protection Suzu available. There is a small cast time animation, so you want to cast it earlier rather than later. If you cast late, you won't be able to finish the animation in time. Tip number two is that Swift Step can also act as a cleanse. Similar to how the anti-healing effect or damage over time effects like Dynamite can be cleansed with Sombra's Translocate or Reaper's Wraith form, Kiriko's Swift Step can do the same without having to waste Protection Suzu on herself, not to mention the fact that Protection Suzu is on a cooldown that's twice as long as Swift Step. Tip number three, diving is one of the biggest strengths of this ability. You can quickly go in deep with your flanky dive heroes to follow up on an engagement. A really scary combo is with Sombra because you can teleport to her while she's invisible. Yeah, have fun with that. Alright, Kiriko shares the wall climb passive with Hanzo and Genji. Tip number one is to constantly look to wall climb for better kunai angles that normally wouldn't be available if you were still on the low ground. Tip number two is that wall climb is a free escape tool against immobile enemies who can't chase. Here's an example against an enemy bastion here. And tip number three is that you can quickly tap the wall to climb on and climb off for a very quick burst of height. Here's a normal jump versus a wall tap jump. So you can use this tip to dodge enemy abilities like the Doomfist Slam as an example. The last ability we'll cover in this video is her ult, Kitsune Rush, which lasts 10 seconds. Tip number one, Protection Suzu is normally on a 15 second cooldown, but the Kitsune Rush accelerates cooldowns by three times the speed, allowing you to cycle three uses of it within the ult duration. Watch. I can open with the Protection Suzu, pop Kitsune Rush, pay attention to the cooldown, use the Suzu mid-fight, and then watch the cooldown tick down 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And then one more time at the end. Kitsune Rush tip number two is that it will always travel downwards from high ground, but it will not travel upwards and will stop at the wall. The only exception is an upward angled slope. Tip number three is to always make sure your position and crosshairs have a clear path for the Kitsune Rush to travel to. You can completely f up your Kitsune Rush if the center of your cast hits a wall like I did in this example. Again, here's how I messed it up in first person. You can see the center of it touches too much of the door frame on the right. And then here's an example of how I should have done the ultimate, way more to the left. Objects like this car and even the payload will also stop your Kitsune Rush. And I uh, guess a little bonus tip number four is that you can work around certain objects by ensuring the center of the cast is off center. So a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right, like so, and then you'll be good. And that's it for the Kiriko tips and tricks video. She's still a new hero and I'm learning new things alongside you all. So drop some of your favorite Kiriko tips in the comments as well. I'll be streaming Kiriko gameplay regularly at twitch.tv slash and I'll see you there.